So in the previous course of videos, we saw how to find the stability of a control system using various techniques. So today in this video, we'll be seeing how to check the stability of a control system by plotting a Bode plot. So let us, how do you actually find the stability of a control system by plotting the Bode plot? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. How do you plot a Bode plot? Well, let's find out. So, let us consider a particular control system like this. Let us say this is a particular control system. So now, let us assume that we are providing a particular input over here to this particular control system. So when we provide a particular input over here, we would obtain an output over here. So let the input signal be given as A sin omega t. Right here, A is the amplitude and omega is the frequency. So here, in the case of Bode plot, what we do is that here we will change this particular frequency. So here when we change the frequency over here what we observe is that we get an output signal given as a dash sine of omega t plus phi. So here what we observe is that when we change the frequency value over here, the value of the amplitude is changed and here there is an extra phase over here. So using a Bode plot, what we do is that we plot two graphs or two plots. One is for the gain which is signified by this particular amplitude change and the other one is the phase. So there are two plots that we plot. One plot is for the gain and the other plot is for the phase over here. So in order to obtain this gain plot and this phase plot, there are a set of steps that we need to follow in order to obtain this particular gain plot and this particular phase plot. And once we obtain these two plots, then we can find if this particular control system is a stable control system or an unstable control system. So for that we have a set of steps or a set of a procedure of steps that we must follow. So let us see what those steps are in order to plot a particular Bode plot. So now let us see the various procedures for plotting a Bode plot. So step number one. So every control system is determined or is represented by a transfer function. So let us take say a particular transfer function is given as g of s is equal to say s plus a into s plus b divided by s plus p into s plus q. So here when we obtain a particular transfer function like this, what we have to do is that we have to convert this particular transfer function into a standard form. A standard form is a form in which here we have 1 plus s by something, 1 plus s by something. So it must be converted into a standard form. So in order to convert it to a standard form, what we observe is that here in order to make it as 1 plus s into something, we have to take a common outside. Here we have to take b common outside. And here we have to take p common outside. And here we have to take q outside. So let us take these say, once we take that we have g of s is equal to, on the numerator we have a b and on the denominator we have p q. So a b by p q multiplied by here we would have 1 plus s by a multiplied by 1 plus s by b divided by 1 plus s by p multiplied by 1 plus s divided by q. So this is the standard form. So the basic first step while plotting a Bode plot is converting this particular transfer function into the standard form. So once we have converted this particular transfer function into a standard form, the next step, step number two that we have to see is that we need to see if there are any poles or zeros lying on the origin. That is here, if we had say S over here, then that means that here we have 
one zero at the origin that is s equal to zero or maybe say if we had an s over here then that means that we had one pole at the origin so here based on that we have to identify if there are any zeros or any poles at the origin so based on that we can identify the slope of the first line of a Bode plot. So here say, if we had a particular S term in the denominator, that is, if there was an S over here like this, then the slope would have been minus 20. Or maybe say, if there was an S squared over here, then that would have been minus 40. But rather, if there was an S in the numerator, if it was here, then this would have been plus 20. And if there was an S squared in the numerator, then this would have been plus 40. So this is the slope of the first line of the Bode plot. It solely depends on whether or not there is an S term lying in the numerator or the denominator. So now, now that we have found out the slope of the first line, the third step is that we have to find the gain of the first line. So the gain of the first line is given as g is equal to here in this particular standard form here this particular term ab by pq can be represented as a constant k. So here if this constant is k then the gain of the first line is given as 20 log k. This is the gain of the first line of the Bode plot. So now the fourth step what we have to do is that these zeros and poles. So here we have the zeros as a comma b and the poles we have as p comma q. So we have to take these out and now we have to arrange this in the ascending order. So let us take say in the ascending order let us take say p less than q less than a less than b. Let this be the ascending order that is p is the smallest term and b is the biggest term. So therefore if this is the case then now what we have to do is that we have to now plot a table. Here let us take the ascending order of terms p, q, a and b. So now, next what we have to do is that we have to mark whether this is a pole or a zero. So P is in the denominator and therefore this is a pole. Next Q is in the denominator and therefore this is a pole. And now A is in the numerator, so therefore this is a zero. And B is in the numerator, so therefore this is a zero. We have marked that. So now the interesting fact is that when we consider the slope, the slope of a particular pole is minus 20. So here Q is also a pole, so therefore this is also minus 20 decibels. But here A is a zero, so therefore this is plus 20 decibels. And here B is a zero, so therefore this is also plus 20 decibels. So now once we've calculated this, now we have to find the effective slope. So here, the effective slope, this is say minus 20 decibels. Now here, what we have to do is that we have to add this with this. So minus 20 plus minus 20 is minus 40 decibels. So now here, minus 40 plus 20 becomes minus 20 decibels. And minus 20 plus 20 is zero. So this is the effective slope. And now, once we have the effective slope, next we have to find the phase. So now, once we have formulated this particular table, next we have to write the phase equation. That is step number five, making the phase equation. So the phase equation is given as the phase phi is equal to tan inverse omega by A, which is the numerator term that is the zero tan inverse omega by a plus tan inverse omega by b which is the next numerator term over here and now next when we take the denominator term we have to put minus tan inverse omega by p minus tan inverse omega by q. So this is the phase equation. So now for various different values of omega, we have to plot 
the value of phi. And therefore we'll get a set of coordinates from which we can form the phase plot. So this is, is the basic steps that we must follow in order to form the Bode plot. So now say let us take a random example of a Bode plot. So if you want to see what a Bode plot looks like, it would look somewhat like this. First it would have a gain plot over here and then it would have a phase plot over here. So here it is 0 and here it is minus 180 degree. So let us take say 3 points 1, 2, 3. So therefore let us assume say, let, let us assume that this particular Bode plot looks somewhat like this. Let this be the gain plot and let the phase plot be somewhat like this. So this is the gain plot and this is the phase plot. So now here when we observe the gain plot here at this particular point over here it is crossing this particular axis. So this is the gain crossover frequency and in the phase plot over here at this particular point it is crossing minus 180 degrees. So this is the phase crossover frequency. And now when we extend this particular line upwards over here, this much distance is what you refer to as the gain margin. And similarly when we extend this particular point downwards over here, this much portion is what you refer to as the phase margin. So here from this particular diagram we can check whether a particular control system is a stable control system or an unstable control system. How is that? So if the phase crossover frequency omega pc is greater than the gain crossover frequency omega gc then this particular control system is stable. But rather if the phase crossover frequency is less then the gain crossover frequency it is unstable. But now if they both are equal that is the phase crossover frequency is equal to the gain crossover frequency then this is said to be marginally stable. So this does is the basic idea behind what you refer to as a Bode plot. So these are the basic steps behind how you plot a Bode plot and ultimately find whether a particular control system is a stable or an unstable control system. So in the upcoming videos we will be discussing certain problems and actually plot a Bode plot for a particular control system. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can plot the Bode plot of a particular control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We will be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.